This time I'm working with a Kinect sensor for volumetric video. Now what that is, is capturing a 3D view of someone. So you capture someone in R, G and B and D, which is depth. So I have a Kinect sensor over here, just behind me there. Now I'm gonna place this camera literally on top of it. Here we go. Okay, let's pop you in here. Okay, so forgive the flat lighting. The idea is to eliminate as many shadows on me as possible, because when you put me or the 3D version of me into a game engine like Unreal Engine at the end of this video, stick around for that. The idea is that the lighting in the engine should affect me uh, and not have, I shouldn't have any sort of baked in shadows on me. I've got an idea that I'm gonna test and the idea is to use the video from the S1H and the depth from the Kinect and see if I can smoosh them together uh, for a, a better result. I'm currently running a software called Breckle on the computer and that uh, is there to capture the, the depth sensor and you can see that on the window over here. You're able to see the depth of the room, there's me. So you can see that I am sort of isolated from other objects in the room. So here we go. And then I'm gonna say some words and one, two, one, two <laughs> to also see if the audio works. I think we should head over to the software and see what just happened. I promise not to turn this into some ridiculously detailed tutorial, but if you do have any questions throughout the process, pop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, we're in the software. This is Breckle. I'm not gonna go over every option in here, but let's just see what we captured. Okay, you can see me there and I can sort of move around. Oh, there you go. So you can, obviously it's from one angle, um, one connect isn't gonna give me loads of de detail, but if you can imagine a couple of more, you can see that that's the sensor there. If we had a few more around the sides, that would give us a lot more coverage. Oh! Oh my, <laughs> no! Oh, I hope it doesn't look like that later on. Oh God, that's awful. Look like a CGI serial killer. Back to my Hayden green screen for a second. You can just crop in, move the these in, and there you go. Background gone. Although, and this is this is where this becomes limited, really, because you can see around the edge here, very pixelated, but it is just one sensor. So I can't speak to the quality of having multiple sensors yet. That's what we managed to do in there. I need to just export this. So we're gonna get like a, a sequence of our OBJ files, which would be read. This, this can be read by things like Blender or Houdini. I'm gonna use Houdini. That is the export done, fantastic. Okay, so I had considered using Photoshop to try and merge the images from the Kinect and this camera, but I think Premiere is gonna be a lot easier and I'm just rendering a sequence to show you now. There we go. So you've got your frame sync there where with the clap. This is the uh, Kinect camera and you can see, I mean, there's quickly punch in there, the, the, the quality is obviously, it's a webcam, it's not very good. So what I wanted to do was use this camera as a higher quality one, and we're overlaying that here. So we'll just split the opacity so you can sort of, there you go, so you can sort of see both happening at once. You can see there are some slight inaccuracies as well. I don't think this is gonna be a perfect solution for especially things like fast movement or any changes in depth. There okay, we go. We should now see that there is a good sync there between the two. And the main thing that I've done here is a corner pin, which previously it was like that. So I'll punch in again. You can see that 
my face is not aligned, both cameras are not quite aligned, so I've messed around with a corner pin filter to try and get them closer. Uh, come on, don't you dare. Mm. Come on, Premiere, don't be... <laughs> it looks like I'm about to be raked over the coals by Premiere Pro. Yeah, I guess I'll just do it again. Mm. Save it, save us, save, <laughs> save, don't kill me again. And we're back, I think I've got it. So quick note, your Kinect runs at 30 frames per second. You've got to make sure that your clip is also running at 30 frames per second in this timeline and, uh, and that everything lines up. Otherwise, we'll have syncing issues later on as well. You don't want that, because you, you'll end up sending yourself back a step. So now we should be able to actually view this. And then I'm gonna say some words and one, two, one, two, and to also see if the audio works. So it's synced, quick grade, and then we can move on. We've got audio, which we'll, we'll export that separately and we'll export our S1H track as is, as a PNG sequence. So let's do that. Export. Now we're in Houdini. There is a tiny little speck here. Um, we were off camera when we first started the recording to press the button, then we clapped. So as you scrub through the timeline, oh, it's happening. That's me coming back into frame. <laughs> okay, so there's me. I've just clapped so we can have a look around. The mesh looks okay. Um, so there's a few things we need to do because we're going from here into Unreal Engine. Uh, and there was a few things that I learned that um, will help that to happen properly. So we, we need to transform the mesh um, to make it bigger because one unit in Houdini is 100 units in Unreal. So we're going to make this 100 times bigger. And there we are, <laughs> 100 times more terrifying, more like. All right, there I am, 100 times bigger. So basically what that does is because these are videos really, these are depth videos. So if you bring something in that's too small and scale it up, you're just going to pixelate it. We can smooth the mesh if we want to. I mean, it's, it's, it's okay. We could also subdivide it if we want to, just to, you know, have a few more polygons. That may make it better or it may make it the same. The same with more polygons, probably. Okay, so there's me looking weird. <laughs> to do the creepy smile, yes, creepy smile. So now the final step, go into Unreal Engine and find out just how disappointed we need to be. The reason that I wanted to do this as an experiment is not because, you know, I obviously have a beef with green screen, but it's really nothing to do with that. I'm actually very interested in a larger project that involves creating multiple stories in game engines and telling stories entirely within those environments. But I'm very keen on trying to find the best way to bring people into those environments. I'm completely open to the idea of creating 2D planes with uh, green screens and actors on them. I think that would be perfectly feasible, but you're in a 3D world with, with lighting that you can have react with, with, uh, with 3D objects. It's very interesting stuff, and I think it's a frontier for filmmaking. The quality may not be there yet, but I know this is where it's going. It's, a, it's as legitimate as filming on a camera like this. You're actually just filming in another dimension. It's not the same as mocap. It's a physical live person doing what they're doing and it's not driving a puppet, say. So that's one of the reasons I find it most interesting. Our model's now in. Let's see how it looks. So 
this is my scene that I've been building for a short film, which is maybe a bit overly ambitious. Uh, built a, a city. And the model I've placed over here. And I mean, not looking quite as terrifying <laughs> as at first, although, you know, still a bit low poly, low detail. The texture applied is the 4K texture, so I apologize. We're gonna go real close in. This is the high quality texture that we received from the S1H. So there's the uh, media texture. So this is, these are the elements that you're gonna need to apply things. So it does seem like what we did in Premiere actually worked. So I'm really pleased about that. Here's the source. So we've selected the files in here and that brings in the sequence of images. There was also a sound file that we recorded and that was from the, uh, from the mic I'm wearing now. That's been brought out of Premiere into uh, Unreal. We took the mesh, which is that. We took the material and applied it. And then we also took the audio clip and placed them into a level sequence. I've already kind of done the work here because it did take a little bit of fiddling around with, but we've now got a playable sequence. So there's me. The geometry cache is the selected track. So you select that in order to play the actual mesh. Then you add the media texture here as a, it's a media track. You use the media source in that track. Um, all, both of those sync up exactly and as they should because there's uh, exactly the same amount of texture uh, images as there are frames in the animation. There's a really important setting you need to know to make this work. Finally, the audio clip, which you can, of course, drag around, but we did a sync clap and I've synced that up. The clap's right there in the, in the timeline and I've synced that up to the clap, which is exactly, just exactly right. So now the moment of truth, Let's center that up. And play. And then I'm gonna say some words and one, two, one, two, <laughs> to also see if the audio works. It's pretty amazing. I mean, <laughs> we know this is not production ready, but we, you can at least see that it's something useful down the line. So with more testing, better quality results, and this may be something that can be used for storytelling, which I'm really excited about. Now, that setting you need to know. In the geometry cache, I found the media texture and the sound file both playing back at the correct frame rate. The geometry cache, though it was brought in with exactly the same amount of frames, was playing back slower. And I don't really know why, but I do know how to fix it. If you right click on your geometry cache, go to your properties, and the play rate by default is set to one. So I'll show you what that was like. Then I'm going to say some words and one, two, one, two, and to also see if the audio works. The texture and the mesh not syncing up, and of course the mesh then bleeding over the edge. Not great. Uh, so went into properties and did a little bit of fiddling around. So I put in 0.24 at the end. <laughs> I'm no mathematician, but it worked. Then I'm going to say some words and one, two, one, two. Now that may not be perfect, but with a longer clip, it would be easier to see whether it was drifting out of sync. And that's it. That's all we had to do. So I'd like to thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a like. And if you have any questions for me, leave a comment. And the next time I dive down a rabbit hole like this, I promise to post another video. And then I'm gonna say some words and one, two, one, two, <laughs> to also see if the audio works.